Good, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to LinkedIn Tuesdays. Very glad you're with us. It's uh, Tuesday, July 27th, 2021. For those on Zoom, if you have questions throughout the presentation, please just send your questions into the chat box. For those watching on Facebook right now, please just send your questions into the comment field. I am monitoring that feed and I'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. Please note this event is currently being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that comments in the Zoom chat window do not appear in the recording. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org, a website to help those who are in job search in the Dallas Fort Worth area by trying to put everything in one place that you would need for your job search. In 2012, I launched a second website, careerusa.org, to help people outside the Dallas Fort Worth area. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search You May Not Know. It is available on Amazon. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group's been around since the late 1990s. I took it over in 2007, and I'll tell you about our upcoming program at the end of this session that we're doing this Friday. And since 2017, I've been, been a member of the practice interview team. Uh, the practice interview team, also known as the pit crew, is a great way to practice your interviewing skills. If you'd like to have more information, uh, just uh, let, send me a note and I'll send you something that uh, how you can register, but practicing your interview. Don't wait until you have an actual interview to do it. Practice now, as they say, practice now. Practice early, practice often. Uh, so it's a free resource in the DFW area. All right, well, when we, uh, we've got four different speakers who talk about LinkedIn and they each talk about LinkedIn from a little bit different aspect. Locke Alderson, Terry Sullivan, Ruth Lipsky, Kurt Vondemater, they each talk about LinkedIn from their perspective on how they use it and how they teach uh, people, you know, how they recommend you use it in your job search. So today our speaker is Ruth Lipsky. She's a career coach specializing in talent development. And she's going to talk about LinkedIn search engine optimization. So, Ruth, thank you for being with us and uh, take it away. All right. Thank you so much. Did you give me screen sharing? Of course, I, I, of course I forgot. I was listening to the music. So here we go. <laughs> that's something that's kind of fun. I like being able to, to listen to music. It gets everybody in the right kind of mood coming in here. So... Can you see that? Yep, you're good to go. All right. We're going to be talking about the aspect of LinkedIn that deals with how recruiters find you on LinkedIn. Everything else you've been hearing has probably been about maximizing the information that you have in there, presenting yourself in a positive manner, making sure you've got skills. We're going to talk simply about the search engine optimization so you can be found on LinkedIn. We'll be talking about the goals that you have on LinkedIn. We'll take a look at what the recruiter's search looks like. And if you've been in Kurt's session, he goes through what the actual LinkedIn recruiter software looks like. We're going to be looking at a different portion of it. We're going to talk about how you make sure that your titles and skills give you the maximum benefit from recruiter searches. And we'll talk about adding other sections. Most of LinkedIn is determined by I'm taking my resume, I'm copying and pasting my resume into parts of LinkedIn. It seemed to be a good fit. We'll talk about other places that you should be adding in information. And we'll talk about networking. So why is this important? It's important because LinkedIn is being used more and more by recruiters in order to find candidates. Right now, a company website is still the best way of getting into a company, but that's generally the lower level jobs. But about half of all jobs that a company will offer are coming from the company website. Referrals account for about 14%. Those are your networking contacts who are going to be championing you or giving you a heads up to the recruiter or the hiring manager. 
The recruiters here on this list mean the headhunters. And a headhunter is someone who is an outside of the company person who is being asked or who is taking it upon themselves to do some research and find people who are going to be able to fit the role. But take a look at this. Recruiters use LinkedIn to find the talent that they want. And a third of all the hires of a company these days are coming from a recruiter going out onto LinkedIn, typing in a title, a geographic location, a couple of skills, and finding the people who have the skills and being able to contact those people, ask if they're interested in changing jobs, if they're interested in interviewing, and moving on in that direction. So there's some jobs that are never posted because the recruiter is going out and looking directly. There's some jobs that are posted plus the recruiter is going to be looking on LinkedIn, but the more technical the person is, the higher level the person is, the more likely it is that they're going to be using LinkedIn as a huge part of how they're going to be ensuring that they get the right people at the cheapest possible price too, because it's not easy and it's not cheap to put that resume out or that job posting out on multiple sites. So LinkedIn is becoming more and more a tool that recruiters use to jumpstart their job search. So you've got two goals on LinkedIn and you should be very comfortable with the first one. Make sure that you've got the right information out there that's going to entice the recruiters to read more about your, your skills and your experience. You're going to have your headshot picture there, you're going to have a nice background, you're going to have information in your about section. And by the way, the about section, you need to have a minimum of 40 words in order to get maximum value for that. But your second goal is to ensure that everything that you're doing on LinkedIn is going to be increasing the score that you have so that a recruiter is able to find you. And we're going to be concentrating on this second goal. So let's take a look at how recruiters are using LinkedIn. And the first thing to talk about is that LinkedIn is calculating a score for your LinkedIn profile every day. And the score is going to be based partly on how much information you have out there and partly on how much activity you have. You can't see your score and LinkedIn is not going to tell you the point value of anything that you do or any information that you fill out. But be aware that your profile does have a score associated with it by how well LinkedIn thinks you're utilizing the space available and the ability to network that it's given you. Now, when recruiters are using the LinkedIn recruiter search, they will normally have a title, in this case, project manager for this search. They're going to put in a location and it can be remote, but at this point, most recruiters are still using the home company site or the site that you would be expected to go to in case that company did go back into an office environment. So we're looking for a project manager in the greater Chicago area, and they're looking for skills in business strategy and in analytics. Notice that because this is a project manager job, LinkedIn already has other skills that tend to be associated with a project manager position. So the recruiter would be able to click on it and add that in as another one of the skills to be searching for. In this case, we've got 42,798 people who have project manager experience in the greater Chicago area and who have business strategy or analytics in their background. Of those 42, nearly 43,000, we've got one person who comes up as number one. And LinkedIn does not do anything randomly. There's a reason that this person was number one, this person is number two, and this person is number three. It's all dealing with the amount of how closely they match the title, the location, the skills, and how closely they're going to be able to match with a high score for their profile. Now, some of the other features that this recruiter is looking at is that they want people who have indicated that they are open to new opportunities. 
So filling in that open to work area is going to give you a boost for most recruiters because the recruiter wants to find someone who is willing to change jobs. They don't want to talk somebody out of another job. It is not useful. It is time consuming and it can be expensive to do. So filling out that open to work is going to be an important part. This recruiter is also interested in, do you have a company connection? Have you connected to someone in the company that you are interested in joining? Recruiters feel that that gives you a better understanding of the company culture, their brand, their products. So they're going to be looking for people who are interested in the company by having some connections to people who are working in the company. Now, here's the other side. This recruiter is looking for people who are engaged in the talent brand for that company. And what that means is that these people have this company in their interest area on their LinkedIn profile. So they're following the company on their LinkedIn profile, which means that on the homepage, they're going to be seeing notices from the company about new products, about activities within the company on employee engagement or recognition. So if you're following a company, you're going to see more information and it indicates that you have an interest in that company. So as we're taking a look at how a recruiter would be using this, narrowing down the 42,000 and odd candidates who match the base search, looking for the people who are open to moving, and who have company connections and who are following the company in their LinkedIn profile. Notice how little information LinkedIn gives the recruiters when they do a search. You're going to see the headshot, you're going to see the name, you're going to see what the title is in the headline area, project manager at Cisco. And you're going to get some information about what the current and past titles are, but that's it. Here you've got all this information in your profile and the recruiter can't see it on the LinkedIn recruiter search. What it does allow us to say though, is that if you put something other than the LinkedIn default of title at company, you can provide a lot more information to the recruiters when they are just begging for more information about you. So if Emily Dalton, who came up number one, instead of saying just project manager at Cisco, if Emily had said project manager specializing in IT transitions with high quality and, on, um, and maybe a few other skills there. LinkedIn now allows you to have 220 characters in this area, so you can tell a story here. And with as little information as the recruiter is seeing, it's really nice to be able to let the recruiter know a little bit more about where your skills lie. Notice also that Emily does have two company connections, is following the company and is open to new opportunities, which can be opened up so that the recruiter can see a little bit more detail about what she's interested in, to make sure she matches into the job that this recruiter is looking for. If you have questions, you can either shout them out or you can type them into the chat room. And Jeff is going to be keeping an eye on the chat and we can cover them as we go along. Let's take a look at another search that's being used on the LinkedIn recruiter software. This one is just for accountants. And there are 4 million and some odd accountants that came up because there was nothing else in this search. When there's 4 million people being looked at for the role of accountant, this person came up number one, and there's a reason they came up number one. And part of it is going to be they're an accountant, but it's also going to be because of the filters that this recruiter has put in. They're looking for people who are more likely to respond. This is another one of those numbers that LinkedIn calculates about you, but you can't see, nor can you calculate it for yourself. This all goes to when a recruiter contacts you for a position on the messaging side of LinkedIn, 
when they send you a note saying we have a job open for an accountant who is going to be in this area, who is going to be doing these things, are you interested? If you respond to each and every recruiter who reaches out to you on the message board, then you're going to have a high likely to respond number there. If you ignore the ones that don't fit what you're looking for, then you'll have a low likely to respond number. So even if a recruiter is talking to you and offering to discuss a job that really is not of any interest to you, at least send back a note to them saying, not really what I'm interested in, I'm looking for a job more in this area or with these skills, but always respond to a recruiter that reaches out to you on LinkedIn. That's going to give you a better likely to respond score. Once again, they're looking for people who have that open to work fill down, and they're going to be looking for people who have company connections. So with those in mind, remember LinkedIn does not do anything randomly. This guy's number one. Recruiters will normally go through 100, 125, just scrolling through here. Once again, very little information being given in these headlines. But if you want to stand out, you're going to put more in your headlines. So a recruiter, when you do come up high on a search, is going to know more about you. And it's going to appreciate the fact that you're trying to communicate a little bit more closely. So here we've got what a recruiter's looking for. Make sure the open to work is completed. That's one of the filters they use. That you're likely to respond which means that you're responding to recruiters who reach out to you on LinkedIn through the messaging, that you've got a headshot, that you've got headline information about titles and possibly skills or something more about you, that you're connected to employees within their company and you're following their company by adding the company to the interest section. These are going to bring you up higher in the search and are going to increase the score that LinkedIn gives you for your profile. Questions on that? Okay. So since we're looking at that headline area, we're gonna start talking about titles because titles can be more than just what the company gave you. You're going to want to take a look at the titles that LinkedIn has standardized. And LinkedIn has standardized thousands upon thousands of titles and recruiters will normally search for those titles rather than the title that they give you inside their company. Because when you search with a LinkedIn title, you get a higher match rate and you get the whole family of titles rather than just an individual title that doesn't look at any other type of uh, within that job family. So you're gonna add more titles into your headline area and you're going to make sure that you use all five titles if possible in the open to work area and in your experience section, you probably got the title that the company gave you at work, but it may be something that is either vague or does not translate across companies or encompasses so many other things that you may have been misnamed by the company. You can add more titles to that experience section, and that's a good way to find that match that is exactly what the recruiter is looking for. An exact match on title gives you bonus points in the recruiter search. We also know that in the past, we wanted people to have title, 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 title in that headline area because an exact match meant so much in the order that the recruiters were able to see you. Now, since LinkedIn has expanded this area to over 200 characters, LinkedIn is asking us to put more information out there, more skills, more capabilities, more value to the company. So at one time we wanted vice president of marketing and global marketing, but now we're saying you can keep the titles, but now we're going to say creating value for business through effective marketing strategies. If you're the only one who has a strong title on a LinkedIn search, that the recruiters are doing, you're going to be much more noticeable and the recruiter is probably going to take a closer look at who you are if you're adding some value that they're looking for. 
specializing in international business expansion. Uh, it can be something that is more philosophical. Customer relations manager helping the world become more customer centric. That doesn't talk necessarily about the skills you have, but it does talk about the goal that you have when you're working in a company. So either skills or capabilities or the type of philosophy that you live by. And if you need a title generator, let's start with this one. You're generally gonna start with an adjective and seriously, if you are award winning, if you are certified, if you are licensed, that might be the first thing that you put out there. Bilingual is a good one to put out there. And it depends on what type of job you're looking for. Some job titles do better with an adjective and some don't. So it depends on your industry and what you're going to be looking for. Then you're going to add your titles and you're going to be separating the titles by the pipe, the straight up and down thing that's above the inner key, because that means or on LinkedIn. And you should be using the titles that LinkedIn has standardized that you can find in that open to work area or on the jobs tab. When you're doing a search for a new job, it comes up with some suggestions on titles. Those are the ones you should use because those are the ones they've standardized. But add a tagline on what value you bring. So either put in some skills or a partial sentence that talks about what you bring to the company on top of the titles that you've put in there. So in this case, dynamic program manager, driving brand awareness through integrated marketing, a lot more serious, a lot more interesting than just having program manager. And this is really good if you've got a broad title like a program manager or a project manager, because those are used in a lot of different industries in a lot of different ways with a lot of different levels associated with them. If you wanna be able to put in more precisely what you've done and brag a bit about what your expertise is, do it in the headline area. It's been expanded just for you. Now we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing with skills. We've got the titles, so we've got more information out there on the titles, but on the skills, LinkedIn gave us a list of what recruiters look for most when they're doing a search. And these are the five soft skills that recruiters looked for last year. Creativity, persuasion, collaboration, adaptability, and emotional intelligence. If those are the skills that recruiters are looking for, you probably need to add those to your profile if you can have a story about when you did these things. When were you creative? Tell me about a story when you were collaborative. So, Adding these in is going to give you a boost because that's what recruiters are looking for. The hard skills, that changes year to year, particularly this year when so many companies have stripped down to bare bones and now they're beginning to hire back. It may not just be these as the hard skills they're looking for. We're still trying to see what it is by what parts of the industries are coming back and what companies are coming back strongest. That's going to depend on the hard skills. But you're going to put those skills in your about section where you can prove that you use those skills. You're going to put them in the experience section. Once again, putting them in sentences that showcase how you use that. But if you're working from home and you're looking for those remote jobs, then you want to make sure that recruiters understand that you can manage your time at home because not everybody can do it very effectively. So putting in active learning, resilience, stress tolerance, and self-motivation are generally the key skills needed to be successful working from home. Add those into your profile, particularly the skills and endorsement area, in order to showcase the fact that you can manage yourself and that working from home is not going to be a problem for you or for the company. So in that skills endorsement area, LinkedIn does allow you to have 50 of them. You may as well use all 50. You need to have both your technical and your managerial skills. It's easy to put the technical skills out there because those come to mind when you're talking about how skilled you are. But recruiters are going to want to know how you accomplished 
what you did. They want to know your style. So if you are asked what made you successful in your last job, you probably are going to be including good communication, building relationships, problem solving. Having those skills in is going to be an important part of the complete package of you. LinkedIn allows you to have three skills that are showcased as these are the most important skills that I have. And those are going to be the ones for the future. Those are the three skills that are going to be needed in the jobs that you're applying for. And the higher level you are, the more soft skills need to be here that indicate high level capabilities. So if you're looking for a vice president role, you probably need to have something on strategy. It's also nice to have one unusual skill here in your 50. And that's going to be one that's going to separate you from everybody else who has the same title that you have. So being able to say that you are the program manager who does quilting, who does rock climbing, who is an international traveler, whatever you want to put in there, just one skill that's a little bit out of place, that shows a little burst of personality there, Recruiters are looking for that because they're looking not only for people who can do the job technically, but who can fit into the company and having a little bit of a sense of humor, having a little bit of an extra boost on who you are can give them a better understanding of how you would fit into their company. Now, LinkedIn is going to categorize all the skills that you put in there. It's going to have uh, the industry skills. It's going to have uh, soft skills. You can't change a skill from one category to another. LinkedIn doesn't allow that. It's not always really good about where they're putting some of these skills, but you can't move them and recruiters know that. So don't look at all skills that you have there. And if you've got an area that's got a lot of skills, like technical skills, you might want to put them in alphabetical order. They'll be easier to read. And if a recruiter or a hiring manager is looking for a specific skill, it'll make it easier for them to find that. Now, LinkedIn has used the endorsement area to try and determine how strong a skill you've got. But what they found over the years that when people endorse somebody for a skill, sometimes it's a sign that they, could, they have a good social network, not necessarily that they have a strong skill. So LinkedIn has recently added quizzes so that you can prove that you've got that skill. So right underneath the LinkedIn portion that says skills and endorsement, if you have a skill that has a test associated with it, you'll see this block that says take the skill quiz. There are three different types of skill quizzes. They can be technical, which is most of your coding languages. They can be business skills, most of your Microsoft suite uh, will be through this area, as well as QuickBooks. And then it's got the design. It's going to be asking you to take a test. If you pass the test, then LinkedIn is saying that you are 30% more likely to be hired for that job if that skill is needed for that position. So if you've got a skill on your skills endorsement, take the test. The test is going to be somewhere between 15, 20 multiple choice questions. It is a time test. You can't leave it. You have to complete it all in one session. You just need a 70% to pass the test. And when you pass the test, you get a badge. And it looks like a clipboard with a check mark in it here. And if you scroll over it, it'll say that you passed a LinkedIn assessment. This test is only valid for 12 months. The assumption is that you may be good at it now, but there are continual features that are being added. And you want to make sure that you've got the most recent set of information in that test. So after 12 months, you'll have to take a new test. If you do not pass, if you don't get your 70%, nobody sees that. Nobody's going to know that. You can retake the test. But you have to wait three months before you retake it. And if you don't pass it a second time, then you're no longer able to take that test. Now, let's talk about other sections that we need to be adding. But 
One of your goals needs to be an all-star. And LinkedIn creates an all-star by indicating that you have filled out the primary areas that it feels are important for someone to know who you are in a business situation. So having a position, a location, an industry, that summary is now called the about section. You need to have at least five skills, your education, and a headshot. Those are all going to be an important part of ensuring that you're going to have an all-star as part of your profile because we know that does give you some bonus points. So let's talk about some things that are going to be important on how you're going to be handling your LinkedIn profile. Let's just go over the ones we just covered. You need to have some information in your headline that tells a little bit more of a story about you. You need to have open to work so that you've got information on what other types of jobs you're going to be looking for. In your experience section, in my case, LHH calls me a career consultant, but the other title in the industry is career coach. So I put both of them here so that if a recruiter is looking for either a career consultant or a career coach, I'm still gonna come up high on their list because I've got an exact match on the title. If there was a third title that was used in the industry, I'd put that in there too. So put in more than one title in this section to indicate that different parts of the industry may call you a different title. Now, the other thing to do is that when you've got a title that is fairly broad, you can put in parentheses the titles that were part of your job that were most important. So although I was a senior manager of training and development, I spent most of my time as an instructional designer and as an e-learning developer, that's what my team was doing more than anything else. And I put the titles there because I did so much work in that area that if I wanted to be hired as an e-learning developer, I can. I had that experience. Even though it doesn't show in my formal title, I'm putting it in as did so much work on this, got plenty that I can use. So expand the title area for your experience section so that you explain a little bit more closely what it is you did. Now in the skills endorsement area, if you have a skill that has a quiz associated with it, you'll see that. The top three are going to be the ones that you think are most important for your next job. And when the recruiter hits the show more, you'll see that you've got the industry knowledge, the tools and technology, interpersonal skills. You can't change one skill into another category. But if we take a look when you're adding a new skill, LinkedIn is going to give you some suggestions. You can take them or leave them. Remember, you only have 50. But doing your search through here for the words you're seeing most often in the job postings is going to give you a better hit for the type of role you're looking for. In that area that allows you to edit, remember that the green tack mark if you click on it, it'll turn white and drop it down to the rest of your skills, find the skill you want and click on the white, bring it up to the top. You can only have three at the top. You've got a trash can next to each one of the skills in case it's an old skill that you really don't need anymore. And the four parallel lines over here, the cheeseburger, click and drag and it'll bring them up and down so that you can put them in alphabetical order. When you're in the edit function, also take a look at this endorsement setting. You want to make sure that all three of these are in the green because you want people to be encouraged to endorse you when they come onto your page. Unless you have these as a yes, they're not going to be able to do that. They won't see it. Okay, going back up, how do you know what your score is? LinkedIn doesn't tell you but you can get a good feel for how you're ranking by your dashboard. 
keeping track of how many people viewed your profile. The more active you are on LinkedIn, the higher this number is going to be. So if you start adding more information to your profile, if you start getting more active in networking and on the homepage, you'll see that this number starts going up and your search appearance numbers are going to go up too. But let's go and take a look at the other sections that we want to be adding in. Let's add a section here. If you don't have an about section yet, you can click on that. But in your background area, you can see that you've got your work experience, should have that from your resume. Education, yep, got that from your resume. License and certifications, you might have elsewhere in your profile, but you need to repeat them in your licenses and certification area. LinkedIn rewards you by having more than one mention of a skill or a license or an experience. And the more often you mention a skill in your profile, the more LinkedIn feels that you truly are skilled in that. So putting things in licenses and certifications that you may have elsewhere, fine, repeat it. LinkedIn loves that. You also wanna put in any volunteer experience that you had because companies are more and more aware of the social obligations that, come, that the community feels that they have. And if you're already in a volunteer mode, then they're probably going to be more interested in bringing you in because that's the type of person they want in their organization. Now take a look at this accomplishments area because there's a lot you can do on accomplishments. If you had any publications or any patents, add those in. It may be elsewhere in your profile, add them in here because that's an area that's searchable by the recruiters. Courses, these are the courses that you took during the time that you were at that company. And if you took the time out of your job to learn more about some aspect of the company, additional training to get you better at your job, you need to add that in here. You also need to add in the courses that you took on a yearly basis that came from the compliance team or the legal team that talked about things like privacy and phishing and things of that sort. Those are going to be important because because the courses that you take that came from compliance tells the next company that you understand the importance of taking those and that you recognize that you're going to be taking them next year and the year after too. So if you took classes on anti-corruption and bribery, uh, creating a harassment-free workplace, cybersecurity, put those in this area because it indicates to a company that you understand the need for those. Plus any other classes that you take that indicate that you are a self learner and that you take advantage of training opportunities within a company. Other things to be looking at through here, projects. Projects is the second biggest area of LinkedIn. The about section is 2,600 characters. The description area here is 2,000 characters. This is immense. If you have something in your experience section that is a bullet point and you've got one sentence that talked about something really, really important that you did. On a resume, you're gonna to have to keep it fairly short because you have a limit on the size of a resume. And even when you're putting that in your LinkedIn profile, unless you're putting it into the about section, you're probably gonna keep it fairly short and use the keywords that are important for that search. But here it allows you to tell everything that happened. Give it a project name. You're going to have to associate it with one of the roles that you had. But in this description area, you can put in what the situation, what the background was, what the tasks were, any uh, obstacles you had to overcome, all of the activities that you had to go through and all the results. So 2000 characters gives you plenty of room to talk about the whole project, what you did, how you did it. It adds an immense amount of space into your LinkedIn profile 
and it is chock full of keywords at that point because this area is searchable the same way the rest of your profile is. So adding projects where you did something that you want other companies to know because you can repeat this for them, excellent way to add value to your profile. Other things on here, if you've got awards in the company, other than perfect attendance, we got rid of those a couple of years ago, but if you had any awards that you were given, put those in here. You're also going to put them in the about section. You may also want them in your experience section. Remember saying it more than one time, more than two times is to your advantage. Test scores only if you're within two years of college. Languages, it allows you to put in any additional languages that you know of. And organizations are the professional organizations that you're part of. So in this add section, look through it seriously and take a look at the things that you can add in to expand the amount of information you've got in your profile. Now, networking is going to add a lot of value to your score. We know that, but we don't know exactly how. So let's do a search for a company that somebody's looking for. So somebody shout out and give me the name of a company that they're looking at. Or put it in the chat room. CBRE. CBRE. When you type it in, it'll give you a couple opportunities of different um, types of CBRE, whether they're at another location. You're generally going to want to go for the company, and especially if you recognize the logo. So here we go to the LinkedIn page for CBRE. If you're not following it, absolutely follow it because that puts it in the intersection of your home page. You're going to be interested in the tabs down here, particularly the jobs tab, because the jobs tab allows you to create a job alert for CBRE. And when you're setting up a job alert, you can put in a job title. And let's say it's going to be a project manager role, and it's going to be. Let's say it's in, oh, it's a Dallas company, isn't it? Let's go ahead and say we're going to be looking for anybody in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. And when you create the job alert, that means that anytime this company posts a job onto LinkedIn that matches the skills that you've got, LinkedIn is going to let them know and give your contact information to the recruiter so they can take a look more closely at you. This is different from the job alert that you would create on the jobs tab. That's a little bit more broad. This is going to be very specific. I want to talk to this recruiter at this company about this job. And anytime you post anything that's similar to that, LinkedIn is going to give you my profile. You can create up to eight different job alerts per company. So if there's more than one job title that you're looking for, Put them all out there. Now let's take a look at the people side of it because if you click on people, it will tell you about the 68,302 employees who are currently employed by CBRE and who have a LinkedIn profile. It's going to give you two columns initially, where they live and where they study. Let's show more and see what we've got here. For CBRE, we've got 3,014 people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's a great start to narrow down to find the people we want to connect with. And when you connect with somebody on LinkedIn, you want to give them a reason to connect with you. You've got these previous and next. Let's click on next. And it gives us two new columns, what they do and what they study. This tells you what department they work in. So if you're looking for something in the finance department, now we can narrow it down to 290 people who might be worth looking at. But let's use the next feature one more time. It tells you what they're skilled at, but it tells you how they're connected. People move around quite a bit. And if you've been on LinkedIn for any period of time, you've probably lost track of where the people are that you used to work with. This will be able to tell you the first degree connections, the second degree connections that you have in a company could surprise you. 
So if we take a look at the first degree connections, you can scroll down, take a look at them. Uh, if you are in a position where you have already applied for a job, you can send them a note saying, just applied for a role at CBRE. Uh, this is what I applied for. Do you know who the hiring manager is? Uh, do you know who the recruiter is who's handling this? Being able to provide you with a little bit more information would be really helpful because it's going to be able to get you a little bit closer to the person who's the decision maker. Now, if you don't have first degree connections, but you have second degree connections, scroll down and see them all. This is a lot to be looking through. It's 122 of them. You can narrow it down by going back to the page that talked about what department they're in. But when you find someone who looks as if they could be useful to you, and they're a second degree connection, they'll generally have the ability to connect with them. Never use a white connect button because that sends the automated uh, request, I'd like to join your network. That doesn't do you any good. You need to convince the person to be part of your network and you're either going to click on their name or their picture and go to their profile page where you find the blue connect button. A blue connect button will always allow you to personalize your message. And for a second degree connection, your message could be, I see we both have similar people in our LinkedIn networks. I'm interested in CBRE as a possible career. Let's connect. I feel like it there. So having some reason to get with them is going to be an important part of allowing them to accept it. But let's go back and take a look at all of the people who are in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And in this case, let's just say, I want to know who the recruiters are. And for the recruiters, you're going to be able to see that there are 70 here. That means there are 70 people who either currently have the title of recruiter or who at some time in their past were a recruiter. Once again, here they are down here. You wanna sort them out by who are the technical recruiters, who are the university recruiters. Uh, once again, don't use the white connect, go to their profile and go for a blue connect button. So you've got a way to talk to that. You should generally try and connect with three different recruiters in a company in hopes that one of them will connect because recruiters are generally the easier people to connect with. Their job is to be part of the people, be part of the LinkedIn networks. So try the recruiters. But you can also type in the name of the person you think is the hiring manager. 119 people who are vice presidents of marketing. We can take a look and see what they have here. And maybe that was not the right title to use. Man, they got a lot of vice presidents. But looking through and perhaps finding the person who might be a little bit closer to the type of department you're in can sometimes help out. So utilizing the company page to find the people who are most likely to connect with you and would be able to give you information about the company. Okay, on that one. Let's try one other type of search and that's by the school or university you went with. Can somebody give me the name of a university or a school that they attended? Either type in the chat or uh, just unmute your mic and let us know. Looking for a school. Tell us where you went to school at. Indiana University of Pennsylvania. University of Pennsylvania? Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Let me spell it right. <clears throat> ah, there you go. 
Okay, once again, universities and schools have LinkedIn pages. They're different from the pages they have out in the general public. If you went to this school, you probably already have it in your education section, which also puts it in your interest area. If you did not go to this school, but you're interested in it because uh, a friend went there, your spouse went there, your kids are going there, your parents went there, you can follow any number of schools that you want. And this is a hidden ability. You need to add more schools, even if it's just because you went to, you like their football team. Now, in this case, you don't care about the jobs, but you do care about the alumni. Because in this case, we've got 78,976 people who graduated or attended UIP in the last 121 years and who have a LinkedIn profile. If you wanted to contact someone because you're looking for someone in a company you're looking for, let's say that you wanted to work at Amazon. Does anybody who went to IUP currently work at Amazon? Yes, they do. Wow, look at all these people. Now, you can see that they've got some other companies here. These are people who used to work at Amazon, but no longer work at that company. So don't get distracted. Go right to the Amazon one. We've got 138 of them. We're going to use the next. What do they do? Let's say that we want to be in the IT area. There are seven people who went to the same school you did who are at a company you want to work in in the department you feel you've got your best fit. Go through all of these folks and now your message to them to connect. And remember, don't use the connect button here. Always use the message, the, the connect button on their profile is I see you also went to IUP, go Tigers or whatever. Uh, uh, I enjoyed my time there. I'm interested in Amazon as a possible career. How do you like working there? Let's connect. Now, after you've connected with them, then you've got the ability to have a dialogue with them at a later time. So now that they're a first degree connection, you can say, hey, got an interview. Uh, coming up next Tuesday with Amazon, any tips on how to succeed in interviewing? Uh, do you know who the hiring manager is? I'd like to look them up on LinkedIn. So now you've got the ability, once you've got a first degree in a company, you've got the ability to find out a lot more information about it. So use your school connections because school connections are one of the more powerful acceptance tools that there are on LinkedIn. One last thing, spend some time on your home page. Your home page gives you a lot of bonus points by providing comments, by providing information about companies. Make sure that when you do comment, you have a minimum of eight words in your comment in order to maximize the point value you LinkedIn, LinkedIn is going to give you. Okay, questions? Any questions? Anybody have any questions? You're welcome to hold down your space bar if you have a question for Ruth. Questions going once, questions going twice. No questions, I guess. All right, well, Ruth, uh, I want to thank you very, very much. Great information today. Uh, just uh, if you want to connect with Ruth Lipsky, here's her what her LinkedIn profile looks like, uh, or at least at least to look like that. I think you have a different picture there now. I'm going to have to go update this. So, I but if you month. do like, huh? I change my background picture every month. Oh, you change it every month. Okay. Well, I like this one. This is really cute. Uh, so, if you want to connect with Ruth, please reach out to her. Please be sure to connect with the blue connect button and please send a personal note. Um, you know. It, it makes sense. Let her know that you saw her on LinkedIn Tuesdays. If you want to connect with me, send me a note, but always send that personal note because I, every day I get people who want to connect with me and there's no personal note and I just won't do it. So uh, you've got to send that personal note so we know how we connect. Uh, next week, our speaker is going to be Terry Sullivan. He's going to talk about how to tell your key contacts and prospects who you are, what you do, and how you can help. Please note that next week's session will not be recorded. 
So you do need to watch it live if you're interested in watching it. Um, whoops, you know what? I am not advancing my slides here. Let's see here. Here we go. So here's Terry for next week. How to tell your key contacts who you are, uh, what you do, and how you can help. The session will not be recorded, so you'll only you can only watch it live. Uh, all right, I need everybody to please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Hands up, everybody. I, Jeff Morris, promise to always send a personal note whenever I send a LinkedIn request to connect with anyone. This includes when I use my cell phone or my computer. Very, 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 very important. Uh, let people know why you should connect. Otherwise, you know, when you just hit, when you just hit connect, 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 and it sends that generic thing, it's like, well, why should we even do that? Give, give reason, give people a reason to connect. All right, uh, Career DFW and Career USA, we're putting on training uh, five days a week or five days a week. Uh, tomorrow for interviewing Wednesdays, tomorrow at one o'clock, we'll be on session number 13, avoiding interview crashes. These are things that uh, Walt and Mark have seen over the last uh, several years of doing hundreds and hundreds of interviews and common mistakes that people make. So join us this Wednesday, tomorrow at one o'clock. For effective resume Thursdays, uh, Carol Burkell will be with us. She's going to talk about my favorite resume tips. This Friday at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, Kurt Vondermatter, who also presents here on LinkedIn Tuesday, who's a retained search consultant, will be talking about the new normal of the job search, what he has seen, what he sees in the job search since the pandemic, and where he thinks the market's going to be heading. So, uh, you know, he is placing people every day. So please come join us and you'll hear his thoughts. Uh, next Monday, uh, Networking Mondays will be moving to Thursdays. So what's going to happen is I haven't had a three-day weekend in 16 months. So because of that, I'm now going to start taking three-day weekends. I'm going to take Mondays off. So what we'll do is every Thursday, the first and the third Thursday will be effective resumes. The second and the fourth Thursday will be all about networking. So as long as you sign up for our mailing list, you'll get the updated list of uh, you know, what we're talking about every Thursday. So uh, please join us. Uh, we'll be, everything will be moving to Thursdays for, net, for the networking session. If you'd like to join the Career DFW and Career USA LinkedIn groups, you're welcome to do so. Uh, you don't have to live in the DFW area to join the Career DFW LinkedIn group and you'll connect with 13,000 other people. So it's a great way to connect with other people uh, you know, to be able to expand your connections. The session has been recorded. It is going to be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel. On the Career USA YouTube channel, it looks something like this. Click on playlist where the green arrow is, and then don't click on the video down below, but pick the topic that you want. And down below where you see the red arrow, click view full playlist, and then up will come a list of all the different uh, uh, videos that are in that particular playlist. And uh, the newest one should always be on top. If not, click on that little sort button and it'll get the newest one to the very top for you. If you're not receiving emails about our workshops that we're putting on every day, you're welcome to join the Career USA mailing list. Just send an email to Career USA plus sign subscribe at groups.io. And uh, you won't get spam, but you'll get six emails a week. And what you'll get in those emails is the title of the day, the topic of the day, and the Zoom link of the day. So you won't have to go searching to how to find the Zoom to get it, the link to get into the Zoom meeting. Please note uh, Career DFW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Ruth is a, Ruth volunteers to do this presentation. All of our speakers volunteer. I'm a volunteer. For the last 13 years, I've just been doing this to try to help you land your next great opportunity. Career DFW survives on donations. Please consider making one when you get your next job. So thank you very much for joining us today, everybody. Have a great week. Hopefully we'll see you later in the week. And there's that uh, email address if you'd like to join our mailing list. Thank you, Ruth.